And the reason why I'm talking about this, and some of you might know what I'm about to talk about, but I saw something where I would say it is the most underrated superhero show that is out right now. Go on over to dtmerch.com. Show some love to us by getting that merch that we have available for you. Check us out. Double Toasted Live in Atlanta. That's going to be September 2nd for a night of comedy games and the after party that we have going on for you. That's going to be at the Marietta's New Theater in the Square. So, and this is a while back that I saw this and I wanted to talk about it sooner, but I got a little busy and I'm sorry I did because I think, uh, and even if I influenced you know, a couple of people to watch this particular show that I saw, I think that you would have enjoyed it. And the reason why I'm talking about this, and some of you might know what I'm about to talk about, but I saw something where I would say it is the most underrated superhero show that is out right now. Trespassing. How about this, mother? So people, this is, I'm a Virgo. Some of you have already seen this, but I got so into this that when I was coming from Mexico, I downloaded it and watched the whole thing. It's an it's a easy watch. I watched most of it on the plane. I had my, uh, my iPad and I watched it on that. The way it's being pitched here is that you have this, 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 this kid. You know, this, uh, this guy was probably, I don't know, it was probably early 20s, but he was born huge with no real uh, explanation. I don't know, a form of giganticism. Uh, he's got powers, who knows? He's played by Jarrell Jerome. And you look at this trailer, you're thinking that it's about this giant man trying to adjust to, to life. You know, maybe it's one of those things where, you know, maybe the government's after him to experiment on him, or, you know, uh, uh, people fear him, or maybe he does turn into a monster at some point. You know, you, whatever you're thinking about this, kind of get out your head, because if you've already seen this, Make no mistake that this is a comic book superhero movie. And I didn't even know that when I was going into it, which is the, the, the biggest pleasant surprise of it. It's easy to not look at it as a superhero show or superhero property. But if you do watch this and you stick with it and you do see it as the comic book show or, or story that it is, then, you know, you, you'll make no mistake that that's exactly what this is. And it's one of the most original comic book properties that's out there. So for all y'all who are asking for something different, for the, all, all of y'all talking about superhero fatigue, you know, and all that stuff, you need to go ahead and give this a chance. And like I said, make no mistake, it is a superhero show. Uh, it has a direct connection and mention to comics in the show. Uh, in, in the show, you have Walter Goggins, who plays a superhero slash supervillain. And when he's not fighting crime, this is so connected to, to comic books and references comic, comic books so much. When he's not fighting crime, he runs a comic book company. In fact, he was a comic book artist who decided, well, you know what? My comic books are so good, I'm just going to be a superhero. And he goes out and fights crime and people kind of see him as the law. But... What I like about this as a superhero property, it is so many things outside of that. And it does all those things pretty well. You know, uh, watching this, you know, it's a, it, it is an origin story of a superhero in a way. But, you know, and, it's, and that's what this is. You know, uh, uh, Cootie is what they name him. You know, he's, he's discovering his powers. He's discovering how he can use his... His, 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 his size to help out people. In addition to that origin story, that origin story is also a coming of age story. You know, uh, there's so many episodes that deal with him because Cootie's locked up. You know, his parents, his parents who were played by, uh, oh, uh, what's your boy, Mike Epps. Mike Epps and Carmen Ijogo. Uh, his parents don't want to let him out the house because just as they said, not only are you big, you know, you're, you're a giant, but you are a giant black man. And they even show like newspaper articles and whatnot. I don't even know if they're real, but they show the articles from people who in the past have killed giants because they fear them. 
and especially black giants. <laughs> so I don't know if they're kind of making up their own history or they dug deep and, you know, found some weird history in there. But they don't want him to go out because they're, they're, they're scared for his life. And, you know, part of that coming of age story is that, look, you, ha you can't contain no damn uh, 13 foot, you know, black kid. All right. He's going to break out at some point if he wants to. And when he does, of course, he starts to meet friends. And at that moment, we get very much a coming of age story. You guys want to see me bench press the Caprice? Oh. Yep. Power exists only when it's put into action. It sounds pretty, but useless for actual organism. That's, uh, that's your uh, great power comes with great responsibility moment right there, you know, where, he's, he, where they're talking about it, the responsibilities of what it takes to be a superhero. But also, as I said, it's very much a coming of age story. You know, this is him learning how to deal. And it's fun because he hasn't been out. He's awkward. It's him learning how to deal with the, these new friends that he made with also dealing with his size and dealing with how he finds out the world eventually sees him. And in addition to being in a, a coming a coming of age story, it's also much more. You know, Amazon also has another superhero property, which I think is amazing. I hear you smacking over there. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I know what you're talking about. Sucking your teeth. What is it? <laughs> you're talking about them boys. No. No? Yeah. It's yeah. Boys. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Invincible? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Invincible is very good, but like, like the boys, the reason why the boys is one of my favorite superhero shows, well, actually one of my favorite superhero properties ever, is because the boys, they elevate themselves above all the other superhero stuff out there by having a lot of social commentary in it. And that's what this show does, too. It has a lot of social commentary, maybe to the detriment of some people who watch it, because it does stop to just pretty much lay it out there. You know, they're very, very upfront with it. You know, it's, it, some people say it almost hits you on the head, but it's done so artistically. You know, if, if it had been done any other way, I'd be I, I would probably be like, that's a little heavy handed. But it's done with such artistry that, you know, they do give you something to watch. While they're okay, maybe preaching to you. Of people who can't afford many of the goods that the economic system produces. You know, watching somebody who's the director and had that much vision, you know, just you know, that the, the, again, the artistry that goes behind it. You know, this this thing combines a lot of different media. You know, we're talking about stage design. We're talking about stage production. We're talking about animation. And by the way, different styles of animation, you know, stuff that looks like stop motion to they have a they have a mock TV show that comes on, which is incredibly weird, uh, which is, uh, you know, a 2D animated show. You say this as though the last movie this guy did wasn't sorry to bother you. Like, like I mean, like, yeah, th he had no subtlety in that whatsoever. No, no, not subtlety <laughs> is not his thing, man. I mean, we're talking about... But it's well, still well done, like you said. No, no, it's, it's amazing, man. And the guy who did, we'll talk about him a little bit. The guy who did this, of course, is Boots Riley. We'll talk about this directing a little bit. Boots Riley, if you ask me, look, you don't have to like the guy, and I understand why people would not like him. But I will say that if he reminds me of anybody, and a lot of you older moviegoers out there uh, would know who I'm talking about, he reminds me of <laughs> the black version of a director from the early 2000s that a lot of people were talking about, uh, Michelle Gondry. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look him up. He's almost like the, 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 the black social activist version of this director because this director was also very surreal in some of the stuff that he did. Uh, also absurdist with some of the stuff that he did, but he did it with a lot of visual flair. Um, what movies did this guy do back in the day? I know the name and I'm blanking right now. <laughs> because I mean, for somebody who likes his movies a lot, I know that he did uh, that movie with, oh, Re uh, Be Kind Rewind. It was oh, one of the movies yeah. that he did. With Jack Black. Yeah, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which is amazing. He did that movie. So, yeah, uh, uh, Bruce Riley reminds me so much of this guy. And there's he, Eternal is, Sunshine of the Spotless he, he Mind. He gives me like a bizarro Spike Lee vibes. Like if Spike Lee was a bit more chill. Oh, no, no. I don't even see that with him right there like that. No, I just mean like with the, like very heavy on the social commentary, oh, yeah. but he's going... But he's having he's having fun with it. He's pulling out the absurdity in the social commentary, oh. like uh, what Spike Lee did a little bit. And like, yeah, uh, no, I can see that. No, in fact, this director, he, uh, yeah, he did. He tried to go mainstream, and it did not go so well because he's so out there. He did the Green Hornet, uh, that was supposed to be his most mainstream movie, did not do so well. But at times when his comedy did hit, 
it hit very well. And every time he did it, and I'm saying the thing, same thing about Boots Riley, it was done with a, a, a lot of originality. It was done with a lot of imagination. There's a lot of humor in here that is, again, very grounded, very relatable. But then again, there's so many bits in here that are, again, absurdist, and, but also just very creative and, and very funny. <laughs> yeah, that was Cootie dressed up as a giant bush, man. Uh, things like that in the film, you know, just creative touches like that are very well done. And just, you know, man, this make me have a lot of respect for, for Boots Riley, man. Boots Riley, as far as these, the, the two things that he's done so far, you know, uh, this right here and uh, his other film, Sorry to Bother You. Which again, that's a, I know that's a rough one for people to get into because it actually sold it as some more, somewhat of a broad comedy. It sold you, it tried to sell you on one <laughs> single gimmick, and that that gimmick that they try to sell you on, it's it's absolutely funny, man, and it it got a lot of people, and it becomes a tool. Let me give you a tip. You want to make some money here? Use your white boys. Hey, Mr. Kramer, this is Langston from Regal View. That the movie got a lot weirder, and that's because <laughs> the Boots Riley tried to have more social commentary in the movie and that that social commentary he you know he again it was uh it was very it was just very on the nose but also very surreal the way he did it so he's not a director for everybody out there but again if you're somebody who's looking for something different i think that this guy is the go-to you know he's a guy whenever he does a project i'm looking forward to what he does man and i kept up with this guy for years i'm uh, again you know i'm coming back from the you know the, the well, you know, ever since hip hop was started, but you know, in the, in the '90s, Boots Riley was huge. With uh, I don't know about huge, but I know that he was, you know, his uh, there, he had a few songs out there that hit pretty hard because he had a rap group called the Q, uh, the Q, the the Coup. It's almost ten o'clock. See, I got a ball of for property, so I slip my baby on slapper. I loved Boot, Boots Riley back then. Never thought he'd be this kind of director, you know, that that we have today. He, that, that, that blows my mind because he's kind of nerdy in a way. And even after a while, his musical style changed, too. But, you know, a lot of people wrote him off just as, you know, just another average, uh, you know, rapper. You know, but if you listen to his lyrics, his lyrics are very deep. They were very political and, and a lot of social commentary in that back then. So on that end, I'm not surprised. As far as being the visual director that he is right now, the absurdist director that he is right now, never thought I'd see that with him. Um, but, you know, uh, uh Looking at the work that he's done, man, why why are more people not watching this or talking about it? I I get it, man. I you know I get it because, like I said, if you watch, if you watch, uh, uh, sorry to bother you. You know, he's, it's it's weird. Let's just be honest. It's just weird. Okay, it's weird, and it might and and it's too out there for some people. And if you've seen this movie. And you see how this show uh, is going to be, then yeah, I cannot blame you for watching it because it is not for everyone out there. Not not at all. It's like I said, man. It's it. It's an acquired taste. This kind of humor. It's it is so bizarre at times that it is not easily accessible. Even though I feel like this this thing looks beautiful. When they're doing, you know, when they're breaking down some of the social commentary right right in this, uh, you know, it could be very heavy handed. And so I can I can I, I, I can see people feel like they're getting preached to, you know, like this stops for a speech. It's a beautiful speech because that's the thing with the show. I'll just I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler here. Doesn't end with a big superhero fight, you know. Doesn't end with some big climax with two, you know, the villain and the superhero going after each other and punching and you know the shit at each other and everything. There's there's that in there. It ends with this a speech. So you know I get it when people say that you know that's not for them. I understand. Uh, also, this is just nasty too, man. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, there's a part in here. And if this had been, if this show had been a, a little bigger, I guarantee you people would have been talking about a sex scene in here that he had, that he has with this girl right here. And that sex scene is disgusting. All right. It's, it's full of all kind of fluids, noises, and that, that, and that girl is hot. By the time it was done, my my dick didn't want to come out for a week. <laughs> it, it was it was it was it's disgusting. 
Uh, so that could be a turnoff for some people, man. It's nasty. And they go and, you know, he, and I have a feeling he's trying to make it as, as awkward because you have a kid who's a virgin having sex for the first time, but also he, he's, he, he has a penis the size of a human being probably. And they're trying to figure out what to do with it. And so they do all kind of crazy positions. And I mean, it's just, it turned me completely off, man. I, yeah, I just, yeah, my, my penis, I ain't going back out there, man. <laughs> my question on this is, because I've seen the trailer where, where he's just a giant baby, and that's what I thought it was. I thought it was some coming of age thing. I had no idea about any kind of uh, superhero or like yeah. metahuman thing until you just now mentioned it. And I'm wondering, where have you seen this advertised? Where have you seen this like? They put a trailer out and people even emailing me about the trailer. So it's out there. Yeah, but I'm mean, like, I feel like I haven't seen this organically. Whereas like, I'll see billboards for the boys or even for Rings of Power. I saw a few buses with it on there. I haven't seen anything for I'm a Virgo. Yeah, I mean, it's, listen, it's a, it's a hard pitch, first of all, as weird as it is. And it's funny because it probably suffers from for, for most people out there from trying to do too much because in addition to being a superhero property, it's also man, it's got like great action scenes in there. You know, it's uh, Walter Goggins has an, there's 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 a there's a point in the in the in the in the show where Walter Goggins is uh, he's the the show just stops to have him fight an assassin that just pops in every now and then. And you don't know what's going on with that. It actually has a clever twist to it, what's going on with it. But if you don't know what's happening and you're already weirded out by most of this, then you you know it might be hard for you to stick with. So I do get it. And Boots Riley is just a, you know, one of the things I really am discovering about him, you know, forget his hip hop past and doing all this, you know, artistic stuff right here. Uh, the guy is kind of a nerd, I believe, <laughs> because there are people in here with powers. And let me see here. Apparently, the love interest is Denzel Washington's daughter. That's Denzel Washington's daughter? That's what uh, Mr. Y Mr. Yasman's saying. You know what? I can see that, man. That's Olivia Washington. I can see, You know what? Let me put this back up here. God damn. I could... Uh, yeah, nepotism doesn't exist, right? <laughs> but I can see it, man, because she... You know who she... God damn it. Just had it here. You know, you know who she looks like. First of all, she looks like her mama, and second of all, she looks like her brother. Oh, all right, yeah. David Washington. Yeah, I can see that. In fact, if David Washington was a transvestite, he'd probably look like that. But she's she's beautiful though. She's 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 gorgeous, man. But I did not know that that was Denzel Washington's daughter. That's crazy. Olivia Washington's her name. Nasty ass, sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, I, Denzel's my hero. It's gonna take me a while to find your daughter. He'll be again. drunk now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I be, I truly believe that Boots Riley is just a big nerd, man, because of the superhero stuff in here. But also, if you listen closely, like he probably loves anime because there's this scene in here where one girl has uh, she's got superpowers. Whenever she uses her powers, it makes a certain noise. And I'm not sure if this is the scene right here from this certain anime that almost everybody knows. But the same sound effects, I swear, are there. If you heard that, that's, damn, that's low. That's low, but if you heard it, you heard it. He uses that sound effect for when this girl uses her superpowers. Oh, interesting. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 now that I listen to it, it's directly from Akira, man. Uh... Yeah, so it's so I got man, I got a lot of respect for this director. And I, 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 and maybe I, you know, I, he, you yes, I can understand why people would not would be, would be turned off by his work. But I got to tell you, one thing that can be said for sure here is that if you really are looking for something different, you know, if you're looking for somebody with a unique vision and somebody who has something to say. Like Boots Riley is the guy, man. I mean, you have to respect it for that. I, look, maybe I don't flow with all of it, but I think this is pretty incredible. I think it might be seven, actually, seven 30-minute episodes. Oh, oh, the 30-minute episodes. Man, it's easy. It's an easy watch. Okay. That's how I was able to watch this on my trip back from Mexico. Like, I, by the time I landed, I was done. Like, I was landing as the last episode was ending. So, yeah, it's... If you're looking for something, 
that has a comic book feel to it. If you're looking for something from, you know, that that for, with familiar themes that you like, but you're looking for it done in a very refreshing and new way, give us a chance, man, if you haven't seen it already. As I said, man, a lot of people talking about, well, we're just doing the same thing over and over again. Well, somebody out here is trying to do something a little different. And it is entertaining. It's not like it's completely, you know, confusing or you can't understand it or follow it. You can. Give it a chance. You know, it's a, and I, and I, and I, nothing else, I like to support people who really do come out with something very unique. You know, the, uh, apparently Amazon let him have his creative control with this. Because it's, it you know, no studio would do this. Not today. <laughs> you know, you, Disney would not touch something like this. You know, you know uh, Warner Brothers. Nah, not, they, they would not do this shit. So, again, streaming is allowing us to do something a little different. And right now, this is one of the most unique comic book properties that I have seen in a while. So, you know, give it a chance. Y'all. It's already out. What's up? Yeah, uh, does... Twitch still has a thing where you can do watch parties of Amazon original shows. Oh, yeah, I think so. Like, it's like where you can do. Like, I'm not watching this with people. <laughs> For one, I'm not, I'm not sitting there that nasty ass sex scene with people again. No, y'all. That's what I'll be like watching porn with my mom or something. I'm not doing that shit. My penis just decided to come back out this week. I'm not, I'm not watching this, man. No, no, y'all. Why you gotta watch? And plus, if it gets too weird, I don't want you blaming me. Bro, I'm here to watch this weird shit. You know, you got to watch this on your own. This is something you completely watch on your own. <laughs>